Here we go, ladies and germs. It is another amazing, arousing, arousing. <laughs> anyway, it's a Portal 2 tutorial. Uh, I should have been sleeping last night. I should have been getting a beauty sleep. But instead, I learned how to do this. You step on it and it goes, but it doesn't open the door. And then you step on this one, it doesn't open the door either. But then you got to go and take this guy and put it on here. And then this guy and put it on here. And then it opens. Cool, let's do it. This is actually quite simple once you get the just the specifics of it, which we will do now. So, obviously, I love to do my tutorials in stages. There are going to be three st or two stages of this one. First one, I'm just going to show you how to make it so one door can have multiple inputs. All right? So that means you have to have multiple things queued in order to make it so the door opens. And I want to make this so it's a little bit more... S I want to make it so I don't have to s keep flipping everything. So make a player start entity. Um, I'm, the first the first stage is going to show it how you can have a door that has more than one and make a prop test chamber door. Make a door that has more than one um, more than one trigger. You know what I mean? Like you need more than one button activated in order to open up a door or to or to do some sort of specific task. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to do the uh, then I'm going to do the the indicator lights and that sort of thing. So I mean, I've already done a tutorial on indicator lights, or if you already know it, and you just want to know how to make it so it's multiple buttons for one door, then you're going to be done, and I'll let you know after I do that. Obviously, you'll know it as well if you're watching. And then if you want to stay, and I'll show you how to do the indicator lights on how I did them, then uh, then there you go. And it'll be there just to have it. So I made a door. I'm going to name it Door. I'm going to go to Model, and I'm going to stop it from opening and closing all the frickin' time. Okay. So, and I also want to make sure, just because of what I'm going to be doing at the end of the tutorial, I want to make sure that it's symmetrically in the center. And I think that looks pretty good. Right? Four on the left? Yeah. All right. And now let's make our two buttons. I'm going to make uh, two floor buttons. So floor... And floor button, boom. And I'm going to name this button one. So one thing that I've been getting into for ease, you can go over your top down and then have it over the button, press shift, and then click with your mouse and drag it over. Cool. You just copied and pasted. I know, I know you're just amazed right now. And I'm going to name this one button two. Okay. So now I've got my two buttons. So this is the way it works. Normally, normally the way that you'd want to think about it is that you want to have everything in series. You know, like uh, a length of Christmas tree lights, like the way that they used to be before they were in parallel, where if one light burnt out, all the lights wouldn't work. So it's that sort of thing. Or if you have power switches, you know, these giant power um, power things on a uh, from a power station where all all the switches need to be turned on in order to activate everything. It's the same thing that we want to do here, except you can't make it connected directly to the buttons. You need a middleman to hold the state of the button. Okay, I know that sounds confusing, but pretty much what you want to do is make what is called a logic branch for each button. So let's go over here and let's do this first one. So then go and make a logic branch. Woo! And then we're going to name it branch 1. And you want it to start at an initial value of 0. So let's assign it to the button 1. So just do the outputs of the button 1 and make it so on pressed, you go to branch 1, and you set value at 1. So like 1 is on, 0 is off, pretty much. So then we want to do un on pressed to branch 1, set value for 0. So that means this logic branch is like a placeholder. So whenever the, the state of the button changes, this logic branch is going to have a different value on it. Obviously, it's going to have 1 for when it's on and 0 for when it's off. Easy. Now what we're going to do is shift-click on this guy and drag him over. And then we're going to rename it to branch 2. Because you, you need to have 1 for each button that you want to do this with. So now we've got to do the exact same thing. On pressed, branch 2. Set value of 1, not 2, 1. And then you want to add one more. On unpressed, branch, what the hell? Branch 2, set value of 0. Great. So now your branch, or your uh, your logic branches are set up. So that means there's some way that, um, that the entity we have to deal with is going to be able to know what the state of the buttons are in. And what that is called is a logic branch listener. 
So let's just do that logic branch listener. You don't even need to name it. So go over to logic branch and then attach it to branch one. Logic branch 02, branch two. Great. There you go. Now a little bit of explanation on gates. You probably, if you've if you've actually gone, sorry, I gotta scratch my ear, and that's probably messing with my microphone. If you're familiar with logic gates or computer science and all, then you understood it, but this is the way to think about it. You have three different ones on all false, on all true, on mixed. Now, um, there's the gate that we're thinking of, it's called an end gate. And imagine that, that each switch needs to be turned on for it to work. Everything must be true. This button must be pressed, and this button must be pressed. It's either all or nothing. Now, on mixed, that's called an OR gate. And an OR gate, it can be compared to being in a room with a bunch of different light switches where every single light switch will turn on the light. So as long as one switch is on, the light will be on. So those are the two different types of things that you can do. So we want to do an end gate. So the only one we're going to make open the door is on all true. On all true attaches itself to both the branches, and just and as long as they're both one, it's it's considered true if their value was one. By the way, one is true, zero is false in computer science lingo. So on all true, you want to make your door open, and it's likewise on all whoops on all false, you want to make your door close. But then there's a bunch of different states you can have. You can have all true, all false, and mixed. You can have each one of those states, and you want to account for all three of them. So then you want to do on mixed door, and you want to close it. So that means the only time that the door is going to be open is if they're all true. Okay? Great. So that's it, guys. That is how you do stage one, where um, it is just the uh, it is just like the logic branches with the logic branch listener, and then it ah oh shit I forgot to put down. Um, forgot to put down the floor entities so this is not going to work we're wasting this time but um, but that's it so I'm not even gonna go and test it in order to save time because this is a short tutorial anyway but uh, but yeah what you'd want to do is to you know build your two cubes your two prop weighted cubes and then go up here shift click drag it over great so then you'd go and you would put oh hell let's do it let's do it so then I'll go and I'll prove that this works and make sure that I didn't F up. And then after that, then I'm going to go and make the uh, indicator lights for, uh, for all of them. Throw in a couple of lights and then, uh, and then call it a day. So here we go. Grab this guy, put him there. Grab this guy, put him there. And it opens. How cool is that? I know, it's very cool. I'm just impressed with myself over here. All right, and now I'm going to go and make my indicator panels. So um, I guess this is a little bit more on indicator panels. Before, I made it so you only use these two up here. You can quite literally use a large majority of these. You just have to guess and check because some of them don't work. Like this one doesn't really work, I don't think, and then th these two don't because they're related to these. So like I'm just going to use this guy. And you want to go to your texture overlay, and then boom, lay it down right there. And I'm going to go on and go to my U end, and I'm going to maybe, I'm going to give them six. I think there's about that much space. So I'm going to zoom in and make this pretty compact, or pretty, uh, you know, so I can do more. And I think that looks a little bit stretched out, so let's make it eight. That looks pretty. Actually, I think that looks very nice. Okay, great. And then I want to name this Lights 1. Lights 1. And then apply that. And then now I want to do one more. Well, you know what? This is a little too close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this back. And then I'm going to move this back. Just a little bit. Okay, cool. And now I want to go and I want to do the same thing. Add another one. And I think I'm going to give this one six. Apply it, and I want to go up here, and I want to spin it. So it says 16.0, I think. 16.7. Come on, come on. What a pain. Well, it's not going to be exact. Pain in the arse, if you ask me. Should be able to. Alright, I'm wasting time. 
15.2, who cares? Whoops. Aw, oh, hell. <laughs> Just undo it. Okay, I'm going to try and uh, do a transform real quick. What is it, 90? <laughs> or I could have just done that. All right, and then I want this to be a little bit longer. Uh, Yeah, I think that's good. And then I want to name this guy Lights1 as well. And now I want to do the same for my other button. So I'm going to go to my uh, whatever decals thing. Click on it. I think I made it 8 on the other side. And let's make it so it's longer. Get it lined up correctly. Alright. That looks good. And let's name this bad dog lights too. Okay, and then I want to do one more right here. Obviously, it's going to be the same. It's going to be lights 2. And it's going to be a U end of 6. All right, and I know I want to go to my tools transform, and I want to make that 90 on my Z. All right, now it is facing the correct direction. And it looks like it's a little bit longer on this side, which is a shame. And they're both not close enough. Well, either way, I'm going to move this a tad closer. So I just want it to look so pretty. Just want it so bad to look pretty. And I'm going to actually make this one eight. To hell with it. Eight. Alright, that's why if you already know how to do this, you don't need to pay attention, because I'm kind of a perfectionist about this. I want it to look so pretty. And then this one, where the hell is it? And then extend that a little bit. It's a little bit too far. Cool. Looks good. And then we want to name this one Lights 2. Great, that one's on there. So now... <coughs> oh gosh, excuse me. So now I want to go and I want to make my indicator light panel. So, indicator light panel, and then I want to do that, and um, it does need a name. Indicator 1. And let's go down and make this one be attached to lights 1. Same thing, you know how I love to do it. Click shift, or shift click. And then this, this guy is going to be the same, except I want to attach this to Lights 2, and I'm going to name it Indicator 2. Cool, now I want to attach the lights to the button. So add on pressed Indicator 2, because this is Button 2, and then I want to check. And then add on pressed, add, whoops, then on unpressed Indicator 2. Uncheck. Very cool. Now I want to go back over and then set this one. This is on on pressed indicator one. Check. Check. On unpressed indicator one. Uncheck. Okay. So that's great. So that means uh, you can go and step on your buttons and it's going to activate each side. Now what I want to do is put in the final one that shows that all of them, that both of them, are, uh, are activated. So first we got to make more lights. Let's name them Lights 3. Lights 3. And then, oh gosh, that looks like 6. That looks like 6 worth. I think that looks pretty good. And I want that smack dab in the center. Cool deal. That looks great. And then what I want to do is click on this bad dog, and then I'm going to shift click and drag him over to the center. So I got one more, and then I want to mess with his properties. So this is going to be indicator panel 3, and this is going to be attached to lights 3. 
And now we go over to our logic branch listener and we do another on output. So add on output on all true indicator panel 3 you want to do check. And then of course you want to do on mixed indicator panel 3 on check and then on all false indicator panel 3 on check. Okay, cool. So that means all those are good. And now I'm just going to add a couple of lights because I think they make it look a little bit prettier. Light. And apply. And you know, I just go and I copy and I paste. And uh, there you go. So that's it. Let's run it. Now you got your, uh, your multi-button door. You know how to use logic branch listeners and logic branches. So you can really set the, oh, oh, I'm yawning. You can set that up for anything. I'm yawning because I didn't go to sleep last night. You can set it up for anything. It's totally fine. And um, yeah, it doesn't need to be doors you need to do. You could attach it to lifts or you could attach it to, you know, a thing that's going to drop crap. Anyway, so you go over this. All right, that looks great. And you go over that. That looks great. And then you pick up a thing and you put it down and you pick up a thing and it is all active. Well, great. I hope this is like I said last time, enlightened your life. It certainly has enlightened mine. I'm a much better person now. Okay.